romance of the ranchos. Los Angeles, 1849. Gold Rush brings flood of settlers to California. El Monte, 1862. Ranchers battle squatters in Southland. El Monte, 1862. Rancher carries fight for land to Supreme Court. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a weekly dramatization of the colorful events and characters which form the romantic background for our Southern California of today. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns with another true story of the Days of the Dawn. The United Nations will win the war, but it is not going to be either a quick or an easy victory. Vast numbers of men and enormous quantities of airplanes, tanks, guns, bombs, ships, shells, torpedoes, and other weapons must be produced and paid for. The faster they're produced, the sooner will be the victory, and the fewer will be the American lives lost. You can help your government provide these weapons fast with your regular and liberal purchase of defense bonds and stamps. And remember, you will also be helping yourself and your family, for when these bonds mature, they will return to you considerably more money than you pay for them today. So, decide right now to buy a defense bond tomorrow. And here to tell us the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Tonight our story takes us to the rancho San Francisquito, the land around the present city of El Monte, and is concerned with one of the great controversies that divided early California, the ranchers versus the squatters. The solution of this great question was vital to the development of our California of today. And so this is a story rich in the romance of the ranchos. <laughs> In 1843, the romantic era of the Spanish rancheros was at its height. Almost the whole of Southern California was owned by a few families, vastly wealthy in land and cattle, relatively poor in money or the customary measurements of wealth. Life still flowed on in that dreamy, carefree temple that was as characteristic of early California as the warm, lazy climate. But already many people of an entirely different temperament from distant lands had discovered the beauty and wealth of this land. The upheaval to come was already in the air when, in 1843, a young Englishman came to Los Angeles from Peru on business. Once here, he was so taken with the country that he decided to stay, and so he approached the authorities. And since I've decided to settle down here, I naturally would like some land on which to raise cattle and horses. And... Naturally, Senor Dalton. But first, I must know... Are you a citizen of Mexico? No, no, I'm not. Does that make any difference? I'm afraid that it does. Of what country are you a citizen? Why, I've been living in Peru, but of course I'm an Englishman. I'm still a British subject, you know. Oh, see, si. That is too bad. It is? See, si. For you'll have to become a citizen of Mexico before I can petition for a rancho. You mean I have to be naturalized before I can own any land? Oh, I did not say that, senor. I said you could not petition for a rancho. You can own land, but I'm afraid you'll have to buy it. Oh, well, that's all right, then. I had expected to buy it, of course. Mm. That is too bad. You could get it for nothing if you would only apply for citizenship. I propose to do so, senor, but it'll take time, and I want the land now, so I'd rather buy. <laughs> And so Henry Dalton, or Don Enrique as he was called by the Californians, embarked upon a career as a great ranchero. From Don Luis Arenas, he bought the Rancho Wazusa and built his home there. From Hugo Reed, he purchased the lovely Rancho Santa Anita. Still another of his acquisitions was part of the Rancho San Jose. 
As his domain grew, so did his love for the land. One day, in 1845, he called on the new governor, Pio Pico. Ah, come in, Don Enrique, come in. Thank you, Governor Pico. It's good of you to see me. Oh, not at all, mi amigo. I have your petition here on my desk right now. I am most happy to have a chance to talk to you about it. You think perhaps it can be arranged? Oh, I have no doubt, no doubt at all. Uh, let me see. You are asking for the mission lands called uh, San Francisco, adjoining your ranch of Azusa. Yes, to the south, between Azusa and the mission San Gabriel. I need it as a pasture land for my horses. Of course, you know that this land technically belongs to the mission. See? And I have talked to the good padres there. Father Esteniege assures me that it's useless for his Indians. It's dry, without water, entirely beyond cultivation. Bueno. He will testify to this in writing? See, si. Especially since I've agreed to donate $500 to the mission treasury uh, for good work among the Indians. Bueno, I shall refer your petition first to the Ayuntamiento, then to the Departmental Assembly, and before long I'm sure that you will own the land of San Francisco. Gracias, Your Excellency. I appreciate your help. Nonsense. I'm always happy to help one of our fine citizens. Well, that is a point, Your Excellency. I understand, according to the law, only Mexican citizens may be granted rancho. Uh, see, si, of course, but... You are a citizen, are you not, mi amigo? Well, I think so. You see, some time ago, I applied for citizenship down south, but I've never received my paper, so oh, I don't know. those worthless blunders down south. They probably forgot to send them, senor. They're always doing something like that. Eh, does not matter. You have been here so long and become such an industrious ranchero, I, I myself did not dream that you might not be a citizen. But I should not worry about it, senor. You have applied for your papers. That is enough. Gracias, Your Excellency. Then I shall hear soon what action is taken. Senor, I assure you, within a short time, the land of San Francisco will belong to Don Enrique Dalton. And so Henry Dalton's petition brought him the Rancho San Francisco to add to his already large holdings. But it was also to bring him a great deal of trouble. Trouble typical of the ruin which swept over Southern California, heralding a new era and bringing poverty and bankruptcy to most of the California domes. The first rumble of the coming thunder was heard very soon after Don Enrique took over his new rancho. It was announced by Governor Pico in the government assembly. It is war, senores. War. Mexico is at war with the United States. Already American soldados are in California. We must rise and defend ourselves and our land. War. It was an unfortunate turn of events. Many Californians, disgusted with the inefficient government of Mexico, it thought seriously of the idea of California's annexation to the United States. Many favored it openly. Many others would, if it were not for one big question. But for well, what of our lands, our, our ranchos, our homes? Will the Americanos honor our titles? Will they guarantee us our ownership of the land? Or will they confiscate everything, take away our ranchos, and make them public land? That is the question. See, what of our rights? That is the question. On the contrary, senores, that is not the question anymore. You forget. War has already been declared. The Americanos are on their way here. There is no longer any point to this argument. The only argument now is, shall you submit to the Americanos and trust the fate of your lands to them, or shall you fight to defend what is yours? Gee, you are right, Don Enrique. But which do you think is right? I, Don Ignacio, I don't know. Who am I to say? But I can't help but feel uneasy whichever way you may decide. <coughs> And so it was with anxiety that the large landowners of California watched the progress of the war. Many of them, against their better judgment, were forced by this fear of losing everything to join in the fighting. Through the battles of Dominguez Ranch, San Pascual, San Gabriel, and La Mesa, the others waited anxiously. Then the fighting was finished in California, and they had to wait again until the main war with Mexico was completed. Finally came the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, concluded on February 2nd, 1848. It was called a treaty of peace, friendship, limits and settlements. The anxious Californians scanned its pages with apprehension. What they read was joyous news. Francisco, mi amigo, listen to this. Just listen. And the government of the United States of America agrees to give recognition to legitimate titles to every description of property, personal and real, existing in the ceded territories. Francisco, do you hear that? See, si, it is wonderful, Don Enrique. Wonderful. Our lands are safe. They guarantee us our possession of the ranchos at last. (laughs) 
But the good news was short-lived, for quickly came the news that was to spell doom for the rancheros of Southern California. Gold. Gold was discovered in the north, and suddenly the whole world seemed headed for California. Vagabonds, desperados, and cutthroats overran the state. Thousands upon thousands of honest Americans, blinded by dreams of gold, threw caution to the winds and started for El Dorado. Soon, hundreds of them, disappointed in the search for the yellow metal, straggled into the paradise of the Southland. Many hundreds more streamed in looking not for gold, but for a plot of ground on which to settle down. And the trouble started. Don Enrique, come. See it with your own eyes. Don Inacio, you don't mean they really claim your land. Oh, but I do. Three men with their families. They come. They camp on my Rancho San Jose. Far off in the corner where they think I will not see them. But it is on the best part of my rancho. When was this? I, I do not know. A, a month, maybe. My vaqueros see them and tell me. I think, well, they are traveling through. Let them stop there for a day or two. I even send a man to ask them if I can be of service. Give them food, anything. And they have stayed? Not only have they stayed, they are building houses on my land. They have already put up fences on my land. They have killed some of my cattle when they break down the fences. But, but have you done nothing about it? What can I do? They are my guests. Guests? Man, this is no time for your California hospitality. Don't you see what this means? With thousands of these people swarming into the province, there's no telling where this will end. Those men are squatters. Dalton was right. It was only the beginning. Before long, Dalton himself and every other ranchero was faced with the same problem. In the Rancho San Francisquito, Dalton faced a squatter. I've told you before that this is my land and I've told you to get off of it. That's right. And yet you stay. You're building a house, digging a garden, preparing to stay. That's right, mister. Well, how in the name of heaven can you dream you'll get away with such a thing? It's against the law. I don't know anything about the law, mister. All I know is we heard about all the land we could have out here for the asking. This land here suits our fancy. It's not used, never has been. You say it's yours. You ain't shown us no proof. Of course it's mine. I don't have to show you proof. Mister, do you need this land? Because if you do, we'll get on. Move somewhere else. Need it? Of course I need it. What for? What for? Why, to keep my horses on. How many do you have here now? Why, I don't know. I, I I'll tell you. None. In all the time we've been here, we ain't never seen one of your horses or cows. Well, at certain seasons of at the year. At certain seasons of the year, you use it. But we need a spot all year round for home. Well, you'll have to find it somewhere else. Now, you know that ain't possible. Every inch of this land is owned by you rancheros. Take you, for instance, Mr. Dalton. You've got enough land to keep a thousand families. Most of us lying fallow, worthless to you and everybody else. Just like this plot here. Well, it ain't going to be worthless no more because I'm going to irrigate it and plant it and take care of it. It's going to be my home. You can't stop us. We'll see about that, young man. I'll have you run off. The first one of you men that crosses that fence is going to get hurt. Yes, sir, and that includes you. So come on if you want to, Mr. Dalton. Similar scenes were being enacted all over Southern California in those days of 1850. The situation was growing serious, and something had to be done. At last, in the United States Congress, action was demanded. There was much to be said on both sides of the question, and the halls of Congress ran with debate. Senator Benton of Missouri, Senators Fremont and Gwynne of California were the principals. Are you going to let the wheels of progress be stopped by a few wealthy rancheros? Are you going to permit a handful of cattle barons to perpetuate a monstrous feudal system on free citizens of the United States? Under the treaty, we are obligated to recognize the valid title of the rancheros. But I am convinced that many of their titles are not valid, that the land is part of the public domain of these United States. I propose the creation of a land commission to investigate their claims and determine which of them are valid. Nobody questions the necessity for action on the land problem in California. Senator Gwynn, your bill definitely places the burden of proof upon the unfortunate rancheros. Uh, right. And that is a violation of the spirit of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Not only that, but it will amount to virtual confiscation, for it will bankrupt the defendants in attempting to prove their claims to land they have held in peaceful possession for 50 years. I say it does not violate the treaty. It gives every man a fair chance to prove his claim. And more than that, it gives every prospective California settler a fair chance to find a homestead for himself. Gentlemen, you must pass my bill providing for the Land Commission of California. On it depends the entire future of that great state. The 
fate of the state lay in the balance as those votes were counted. Finally, the decision was announced. Senator Gwynne's bill is passed by substantial majority. The Land Commission Act of 1851 becomes law. When you buy real estate, you should insist upon the protection of title insurance. And here's why. Suppose you buy a piece of land from an individual and build your home upon it. Probably you invest a great part of your savings and income in it. Naturally, you feel that it's yours, that nobody can take it away from you. But one day, a serious defect is found in your title. For example, a forged deed in your chain of title. You discover that this land, and consequently your home, doesn't belong to you at all. That you're in danger of losing everything you put into it. For most of us, that situation would prove disastrous. And your only real protection against loss from this and many other similar defects is in title insurance. Even if you were to spend days and weeks in a careful examination of the records relating to the ownership of your land in over 50 public offices, you couldn't find such title defects as forgeries, deeds executed by incompetence, or deeds to community property signed by a husband who holds the title in his name but made without his wife's consent. These are just a few of the defects which could jeopardize your title to the land. So whenever you buy real estate, remember, a policy of title insurance from the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles is your best protection against loss from such defects. The Land Act of 1851 required that the rancheros of Southern California establish before the Land Commission proof of the validity of their claims. The case of Henry Dalton was typical of many. You see, Don Enrique, I, I do not understand your English. I, I do not understand your law. I do not understand these these lawyers, whatever they are. It's all very simple, Don Ignacio. A few of the titles to these ranchos might be questionable. We don't know. But we must all prove our claims to the land we own in order to keep them. But, senor, everybody knows that I own Rancho San Jose. Nobody could doubt that, eh? No, nobody but the land commission, Don Ignacio. But it's the law, and I guess we'll have to abide by it. So you'd better gather, uh, gather together your papers and any witnesses who will testify for you. Anything you need to prove your claim. See, si, and when will the meeting be held to decide? Don Ignacio, I'm afraid you still don't understand. There won't be a meeting. There'll be an examination of your claim. It'll be held in San Francisco, where the board meets. Madre de Dios, San Francisco. But that is a long way off. How am I to get there? Well, I don't know how any of us are supposed to get there, but if we don't, we'll have to hire lawyers to represent us and pay the expenses of our witnesses up there, all that. It's going to mean money, lots of it. But where are we to get the money? I don't know. I wish I did. We'll just have to borrow on our land, cattle, everything. Uh, I do not like this borrowing. No, neither do I, but what are we to do? Well, as for me, I will do nothing. Nothing? See? Sounds like too much trouble. I, I will not be bothered. I simply forget the whole thing. But you can't do that. You have to file your claim. Why do I have to file my claim? Because, senor, if you don't, and within a certain length of time, your claim to this land will be forfeited, your home lost. And there's nothing you can do about it. Such was the dilemma of the easygoing rancheros. Dalton filed his claim to San Francisquito... And soon his friend, Francisco Alvarado, brought him news. Enrique, I have seen your lawyer. He is just now back from the hearing. Well, what is it? What's the news? What was their decision? Well, now, what do you suppose? They have confirmed your claims, of course. Oh, thank heaven. See, there was no trouble. Except the government has taken an appeal from the decision of the Land Commission to the United States District Court. What? Appealed? See, it is usual for the losing party to take an appeal to the District Court. You mean more delay, more expense, more time? See... It may take much time and much money. And even now, I may still lose my land. And so, in 1855, Henry Dalton's fight for the Rancho San Francisquito was carried to the United States District Court in San Francisco. United States District Court for the Southern District of California, now in session. Please come to order. Case to the United States of America versus Henry Dalton, attorney for the plaintiff. 
Pacifica Sword, the attorney for the government, arose to present his case. Your Honor, we shall prove that Henry Dalton's claim to this Rancho San Francisco is invalid. First, because it was granted to him on the basis of being wasteland, incapable of cultivation by the Mission Indians. We shall prove that this was untrue and is today. Second, we shall prove that the grant was invalid because, according to Mexican law, one person may own only one square league of irrigable ground. Since Henry Dalton already owned the Rancho Azusa, and since this land was capable of irrigation and cultivation, Dalton had no legal right to it. Third, that this land was actually sold to Dalton for $500 given to the mission. Governor Pico had no legal authority to make such a sale. And over and above all other considerations, for Henry Dalton had no right to such a grant from the Mexican government, for he is not and never was a citizen of Mexico. When these points are proven, we shall ask the court to reverse the ruling of the Land Commission and declare Henry Dalton's grant illegal and invalid. <laughs> The evidence you shall give upon the trial of the cause now before the court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be gone. I do. State your name to the court. Daniel Sexton. Daniel Sexton, you are a farmer on Dalton's land near San Gabriel. I am. Describe the character of that land. Well, it's all good arable land, most of which appears to have been under cultivation by the Indians. Was that good arable land suitable for cultivation by Indians of the mission in the years 1844, 5, and 6? And was it deficient in water at that time? It was suitable land for Indians and was well irrigated at those periods. As the ditches show that the land has been cultivated. Uh-huh. Do you know the Rancho Azusa? I do. Who owns it? Henry Dalton. About how large is this rancho? I don't know positively, but I understand it's three leagues. Do you know how much of this Azusa ranch is irrigable? Uh, I should say easily one half. So that, when Henry Dalton petitioned for the irrigable land of San Francisquito... He already owned over his share of one league of irrigable land. Yes, I should say so. Francisco Alvarado, you are Henry Dalton's major domo? Si, I am. When Dalton petitioned for the Rancho of San Francisquito, he paid the priest of the Mission San Gabriel $500, didn't he? No. He gave it to them as a gift. Oh, as a gift, I see. See. Si. Uh huh. The priests were pleased with this gift. But of course, why should they not be? It is a lot of money. Yes, it is. And they might not have been so pleased that Dalton not made this gift, would they? They might even have objected to the grants. That I do not know, senor. It's possible, yes. Ignacio Palomares, you are a friend of Henry Dalton? I am. See? Si. Uh, you know whether or not he was a citizen of Mexico? No, senor, not for certain, but I, I've always supposed that he was. Did you, on any occasion, ever hear Henry Dalton say he was not a citizen? See, uh, he did say that once, but, oh, it was when he was called for jury duty. I wish to be excused. I naturally suppose he was not telling the truth. It was a common enough trick, and he was not the only one who used it. Besides, that was quite a long time ago. And he, he may easily have become a citizen since that time. But he did say he was not a citizen of Mexico. See, si, senor. He did. It is the judgment of this court that the decision of the Land Commission confirming Henry Dalton's grant be reversed. The grant is hereby declared invalid. <laughs> They can't do that. It's not true. It's not just. I'll appeal the case. I'll go on up to the Supreme Court of the United States to get justice. And Henry Dalton did take his case to the Supreme Court of the United States. He waited the weary years until the case was argued in 1859. Early in the following year, the decision reached him. The Supreme Court decided that since the whole case was based on whether or not you were a citizen, and since no conclusive proof was submitted on the subject, 
but only the hearsay of various people, that the district court was in error, its decision reversed, and your grant confirmed. So, at last they give it to you. Yes, after all these years and the fighting and suffering, we're back where we started. No, not back. No, you're right, for I'm ruined. Fees, taxes, interest, mortgages, I'm ruined, Francisco. This news makes no difference. For even though they give it to me, I still have lost San Francisquito. It must go to pay the bills, the fees. Ah, it is sad, amigo mio. No, not sad. Hopeless. And such, such is the end of a great ranchero. Even though he won his case, the fight was lost. Dalton had to part with all of his vast domain to pay the bills which had crushed him. San Francis Quito, like the others, passed into other hands. It was broken up, partitioned as the wheels of progress rolled on. Soon it was the site of a thriving town, El Monte. And today, it cradles other prosperous communities and is an area filled with farms and homes. Thus, what was a deep personal loss to a few rancheros became the birth of a new era. The chance for life of the Southland we know. Often the march of progress is touched with tragedy, as is the romance of the rancho. Frank Graham will be back in a moment to tell you about next week's program. The protection that title insurance provides to owners or investors in land is relatively inexpensive. And the rates charged for this protection by the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles are less by a substantial amount than the cost of similar protection in other parts of the United States. When you buy land or lend money on it, the safest procedure, and the procedure that is quite customary, is to require that the seller or borrower provide a policy of title insurance protecting your investment. To overlook that precaution, regardless of the circumstances, is unfair to yourself and to your family. And now, Frank, what's the story for next week? Next week, we'll dramatize a fascinating story, a story that meant life to all of Southern California. The story of the fight to bring water to the Southland. It's a romantic tale full of drama and adventure, and I know you'll want to hear it. So until next Sunday night, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Gaylord Carter. Bob Lamond speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>